everyone, I'm Jason Peacock. This week I'm going to talk about one of Kumini or Not's latest, Masmora Dungeons of Arcadia. Now this takes place in the same universe as Arcadia Quest, a, another Kumini or Not game that my family and I have played many times. It's one of my favorite games. I was excited when I learned that there was going to be a spin-off in the same world. Now there's three modes to play. There's the standard combative munchkin style mode. There's the alliance mode where you can play through cooperatively. And then they have the epic mode. So how does it play? Well, each player gets one chibi miniature and their hero card along with two level up cards. At the start of your turn, you're going to roll six dice. There's bow symbols, feet symbols for movement, sword symbols also for combat with the bows. There's magic symbols, which you can use to turn another dice to anything. And then there's healing potions, which you can simply cash into, sorry, you can dock them to get some hit points back. Everybody starts with six health. Now you've got these two level up cards, so as you do things in the dungeon, like fight monsters, disarm traps, pick locks to treasure chests, or just play a take that card and steal some experience from another player, you start leveling up. Every time you reach a new row, you basically get to raise, you get to raise one of your two level cards up one level. There's four new abilities obtainable, and these just unlock new cool things you can do with your dice. At the start of your turn, you're going to roll these six dice and just allocate them as you wish. Any dice you don't use, you can cash in for gold at the end of your turn. You've also got this automatic move symbol, basically, a little foot token. You can flip that over. Every hero automatically gets to do that every round. Now, these treasure cards are the real take-that aspect of the game. There's a separate deck for the co-op mode where... Uh, these cards help one another rather than hurt them. But these things are really mean-spirited cards. You can like swap places with another hero on the board. You can you can steal their experience before they get it. Control a monster and move them into that space and attack, that sort of thing. There, uh, there's two things you can do on the card. Usually there's one thing you can do on your turn and one thing you can do on another player's turn. Let me just give you an example of how a typical game turn Flow, so you can get a feel for this game. I mean, these reviews are very subjective, so I think it really helps to see how the game plays. Oh, and I uh, can choose where they move. Oh, come on. Dungeon Master phase. You're making those guys each move in one space? Alright, so it's my turn. My dead guy will stand up. Um... So it's a good thing we've got enough minis to use, or we've got Arcadia Quest miniatures to use to represent the dice. Definitely adds a bit of flavor to the game. Ooh, magic. What's that? Witch Hunter. Well, there we go. I hope, Look you, at that. I hope you gain some XP. Okay, so I'm in a room. I have to fight the monsters before I can do anything. So I will fight them. I'm going to uh, use two magic to kill the Witch Hunter. So this will kill the um, necromancer. This, that's the witch doctor. Witch doctor, sorry. Um, and then I still got to deal with this dragon guy. He's a 4-4. Four, four Wait, he, uh, how many experience do you get from If I die from the dragon, I don't get any. I have to, I have to completely fight everyone yeah. before I get experience. So the dragon's ability is he ignores the first bow. Oh. Okay, well, I don't have enough to hurt the monster, so I'm going to choose not to spend these dice. He's going to hit me for four. I don't have any shields to use to protect. One, two, three, four. Now that I've fought all the monsters in the room, I'll get experience for him. Nope, you will not get experience for him. Oh, you're noping me for experience? When an enemy gains XP steal, one XP they will gain if... Two or more of these cards are played for the same XP there. They are all cancelled, but I take one of your XP. Oh, you take one of mine? Yeah. Just one? So the Witch Doctor gives uh, 
two experience points. So I we each get one. I get one. Le oh no, I'm not level seven, so I will get one too. And you're gonna you're on the board with one experience. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, use one of these really dice bad. to open the chest. I'll get these two coins. I'll get an experience. Oh, Dungeon Master phase. I can move two monsters as long as they're not in a room with a hero or another monster. So, one. That's the Dungeon Master phase. Oh, we got to spawn monsters. Oh, one, two. I'll move him so we'll spawn a monster in this tile and this tile. Alright, so that's the symbols you have available to you. Shields. Um. And. Don't forget this magic. I will explore. So what you're using Wh Whips special ability to avoid combat. Oh, a trap. Because normally you have. Okay, so now you have to put that adjacent to your room if possible. Mm -hmm. Oh, adjacent to the room that with oh, the trap. Oh, and all that. Hmm. Okay, so you take a damage. One damage? Yep. First damage of the whole... I flipped over the next tile that you're moving into. Zombie. Oh yeah, you got a spawn symbol. There's also the treasure chest in this room. If you uh, spend a sword symbol, you can pick the lock, but you don't have any sword symbols. So you've got a lot of feet. Are you gonna do any more? Are you gonna do any more exploring or anything? Well, I have to attack first. Oh yeah. Well, no, you've got your wisp ability, right? It's just may, a. may exhaust your feet symbol to avoid combat in a room. Oh, okay. So you do have to fight this guy. He's a zombie. He's an undead. Zombie. Yeah. Undead. Okay, so you can use healing potions against him as ranged attacks. Alright, so you don't have any swords or anything. He's going to do one damage to you, but you can easily block it with a... Uh, you can block it with a shield. Shield. Yep. And, um... I would just roll... Uh, I'll just roll turn this into a healing potion. So I get... I, I, I just wouldn't take the damage. Then yeah. I'll chunk it. Okay, so you're spending a magic symbol to turn another dice to a symbol you want. And now that you fought him, you can leave the room. Chris? Okay, you're going to take a damage from the trap. Right. And then spawn a monster in there. I want that staircase. Ah, oh, not you again. So, Is oh, that a gargoyle again? Yeah. Okay, then you uh, have to fight him. He's a 2-2, two -two, so he's going to do... You don't have any bow symbols or sword symbols to use, so you might as well use your two shields. Only magic hurts them anyway. Okay, so uh, you fought him. What do you want to do? Do you want to leave the room? Uh, wait, what's this? Explore? Yes. Oh, um, that would be one to... Uh, okay, one, so you, uh... Oh yeah, this would still get flipped. Oh, yeah. trap. Jason two. Now the thing is, yeah, this is going to be the stairs. You're going to go to the upstairs automatically, but this is still going to affect you. So you can put it wherever you want. I'll block the entrance. Okay, right there. So you're going to take a damage from the trap. So that was my son and I playing a game at his request. Now my son really likes this and my brother really likes this. I have tried to like this and I'm just not there. I really really like the dice allocation system. Two minutes into the game I was like, oh this is cool, it was really fun. Um, the special abilities, how, how the different characters are individualized by certain things they can do with the dice. Like one guy can turn, you can take one bow symbol, dock that onto their special ability, and turn that into three bow symbols. I really adore the way that that works. 
it just misses the mark for me on this game. There's something missing. It's like a great idea that's just not delivered in the right package. Now, the components are amazing, right? This is Cool Mini or Not. Standard fare. However, being Cool Mini or Not, why do we have to fight dice in the dungeon? I hate the dice. The monsters are dice. It's, it's the perfect forum for Cool Mini or Not to make some cool monster miniatures. Why can't they just use cards and minis? This game would have been way better with that, that alone. Now, a lot of the monsters are the same dudes from Arcadia Quest, so if you happen to have most of the stuff from Arcadia Quest, or all the monsters, you can put in the monsters and replace them with the dice, which my son and I did. And it does add a little bit more aesthetic to the game. I don't like the dice. The rule book, it's not bad. It's nothing to write home about. There is still... Uh, several things I had to look up on BGG to really get an answer to, like uh, things you can do before a fight, uh, timing with the treasure cards. Uh, I wish I wish rulebooks could just use gameplay examples. It's the best thing to do with the rulebook. Example of a game turn. It doesn't have any of that. Still, you can definitely learn the rules and play the game on the rulebook. It's... Uh, okay, scalability. How does this game scale? Well, this is one of the game's biggest drawbacks for me, because just playing a three-player competitive game, it takes forever for your turn to come around. Now, this can improve with familiarity of the game, and consciously just trying to hurry your turns along. But really, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. You can fight, have a couple different monster fights on your turn. It could take like five, ten minutes for your turn to come around in a three to five player game. Like, I wouldn't dare play this game five players. Oh my god, it would take forever. I think two, three players is my favorite. I have tried the alliance mode where you work together. There's a different treasure card deck, and these cards basically help one another instead of hurt one another. But the game still felt like a hot mess to me. It didn't do anything to improve my view of the game. So the game length, again, the game can overstay its welcome. A three-player game took um, at least two hours, which is too long for this kind of game. It should be half that. Is the game fun? Well, I guess so. I mean, like I said, my brother really likes this game. My son really likes this game. I can play it if everybody else wanted to, although I would try and convince everyone to play something different. So, some people are going to love that, take that aspect of the game where you're playing a card and totally screwing the other players. I found it disheartening to be one experience away from leveling up just to have someone play a treasure card, swap places with me, play another treasure card to move a monster into my space and kill me, and then play another treasure card to steal an experience. So I drop down, I don't know, four or five experience points, and the other player is now in a position to win the game. I just, uh, I just didn't like the take back element of this game. It's too easy to swing the game based on a, playing a treasure card. To recap, I really love the dice allocation system. It's the one thing that could get me to sit down at the table to play this again. I think it's too long. I think it's too um, swingy. It takes too long for your turn to come around. I don't like the dice representing the monsters. It takes me out of this otherwise potentially thematic game. For me, this game is meh, mora. Thanks for watching, everyone. Catch you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. 
cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.